Hey everyone, Phil Ebener here with VideoSchoolOnline.com. In this series of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to create the House of Cards title card, specifically looking at the animation of the American flag. So go ahead and download the project file for this series of videos. Once you download that file, it will be a zip file and you will see that it has a few assets in it that we're going to be using. You're going to be using a photo of the Capitol building at night. This is a free video or image that I found on Wikipedia. It has a title card screenshot of the House of Cards actual title. So this is there for reference. So that's just for educational purposes. I also found the intro video for the House of Cards, and this is good to see the timing. You can find this on YouTube as well. And then I have another US flag graphic that will help us understand the right size of the stripes and everything, the right aspect for everything when we're creating our animation. And there also is this text. So this is called Big Noodle Font. It's different than the actual House of Cards title font, but you have to pay for that. So I wanted to give you a free option. So in our title card, we're going to be using this font and another one that should be already installed on your computer. There is also the template. So when you open up the After Effects template file, it will look something like this. It has two compositions, one with the flag animation and one with the full title card animation. So you can use that if you are interested in following along or just seeing how I do it, or you can start a new composition or just a new project. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you through the entire process. The very first thing to do is to import all of your assets. So go ahead and open up After Effects. Now, when you open up After Effects, it might look a little bit different than mine. I have specific windows, but you can change the arrangement of your workspace by going up to Window, Workspace, and then choosing Standard. And if there are any windows that I have open that you don't have open, then you can open them with these different options down here. So you have your line window, character window, tools window, all these windows, and the ones with the check marks are the ones that I have open. So go ahead and set yourself up right now. The only other thing that you might want to check out is the move anchor point script. So this is a script that I have downloaded and installed and it allows us to move the anchor point for our layers to different parts of our shape. That's a free plugin. Go ahead and go to YouTube and search for my tutorial on how to use and install the Move Anchor Point script if you need help. Just go to Video School Online's channel and you can search for Move Anchor Point. And here's this video. It has the link in the description to the script there. It's completely free again and it'll show you how to use it. Okay, so all of that being said, in this video I just want to show you how to get set up. So we're going to just start importing our assets. So the first thing we're going to import are our images and our video. So we have our capital building card, we have our title screenshot, our intro video, and our US flag PNG. So just go ahead and drag that into After Effects. I'm just gonna create a new folder called Assets. Sometimes with bigger projects, I like to separate my assets into images and videos and other types of graphics, but since this is a pretty simple animation with not too many assets, I'll just create one asset folder. And with the text or the font, it's a TTF file that's included. Now you can only use this font for personal use. You can go to dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com and find this font and then purchase it for commercial use, but this is just for personal use. So please just f feel free to use it for your personal projects, but not for commercial. So just double click it and it will install on your computer. So now we have our video set up. We're just going to create a new composition. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and double check what my composition settings are for the flag because we need to create a composition the right size, the right dimensions for our flag. And it looks like it's 1900 pixels wide by 1000 pixels tall. 
So it's not your standard video aspect ratio, but for our flag, that's what it's going to be. So imagine you're starting your project. You won't have these two compositions. So what you'll want to do is start a new composition. You can create, press this little create a new composition button right here. That pops up the composition settings module. I'm just going to title this flag animation. And then I will change the width and the height to 1900 by 1000. And I found these dimensions for the United States flag online somewhere. I forget where, but you can find those dimensions online if you need them. And the actual flag PNG that you have as an asset will fit perfectly in these dimensions. And then click OK. The next thing we're going to do is just place our US flag image. So just take the US flag, drop it in the timeline. You might have to extend it so that it fills our five second timeline. So five seconds is about this, the length of time for the House of Cards intro. So if you want to make it shorter or longer, you can. That is in the composition settings. And if you ever need to go back and change anything about this composition, you can just go up to composition, composition settings, or press command K on your keyboard if you're using a Mac or control K on your keyboard if you're using a PC. And then under duration, you have your seconds, five seconds. So with this US flag, we have to rotate it because in the house of cards, it's upside down and backwards. So if we rotate it by bringing up R on our keyboard, so press R or just click this triangle over to the left to bring up our transform properties and then under rotation, we can rotate it so that it is horizontal rather than vertical. So we want to rotate it negative 90 degrees this way. We want to decrease the scale. So with the scale, just drag this down until it fills our composition. 50% is about perfect. And then we need to flop it. So a quick way to flop is to actually make this a 3D layer. So click this little cube option. And then for the Y rotation, rotate this 180 degrees. So now we have our project set up. We have this flag in the background we'll use as a template. And next we're going to be creating the stripes and animating the stripes onto our actual composition. Now we're going to be creating and animating the stripes of the flag. There are many different ways to create shapes and to animate shapes, and this is just one of them. So you might watch another After Effects tutorial, or you might already know how to do things in After Effects, and I'm going to do it maybe a different way. I'm going to try to do it the most simple way for beginners. So just follow along and let's get going. So what I'm going to do is actually just drop the opacity of the US flag just a little bit. So I'm just going to drop it down to 75%. So it's a little bit darker. So when we do create our actual shape layers, it looks brighter and we can tell the shape from the background. I'm going to just close this down so it's easier to see. Then I'm going to take my rectangle tool. I'm going to just pressing spacebar on my keyboard, I can move the actual composition so I can see a little bit better. And I'm just going to zoom, zoom back in to fit up to 100%. And then I'm going to change the fill color with the shape tool selected, change the fill to this red. So I'm just going to take the eyedropper and click that red right there. Click OK. The stroke, make sure that's at zero. And then I'm just going to click right within my composition and create this shape. Now we want it to match pretty much exactly the shape of this stripe. So you can zoom in, I'm pressing Z on my keyboard and just zooming in and then taking my pointer selection tool and just double clicking the edge of these shapes and making sure that it fits the shape perfectly. So I'm using again, pressing space bar, I have my hand tool, the move tool and moving that around. Then I can also use the keyboard arrows to move the shape up and down so that it fits that stripe perfectly. So make sure it goes all the way to the end. 
and zoom out. And that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so then I'm going to move this up to the very top. So I'm just clicking and dragging, and I'm also holding the shift button down. If I don't hold the shift button down, it moves left to right. But if I hold the shift button down while I'm moving, it locks it to that axis, that Y axis as I move it up, or the X axis, and it doesn't move it along that left or right. I'm just gonna zoom in here again just to make sure that I put it directly lined up with that stripe. And then I'm just gonna zoom out and now we are going to animate this. So we're actually going to animate this stripe before creating all of our other stripes. And then once we animate this stripe, we can just duplicate it. So click on this shape. And then if you have the move anchor point tool, you can just press this left side button. So to, if you install that, go up to, to window and then make sure that move anchor point is selected. And then in that window, just click this left side and it moves the anchor point over here. I'm gonna undo that. Now, if you don't have that, what you can do is choose your pan behind tool and then select this anchor point and move it to the left side. So it's pretty easy. After Effects has made some updates since they launched Creative Cloud version. So it's easier to move your anchor points and lock it to the left or right or center of your shape. So now we're going to animate it. So we're simply going to create a shape, a size or a scale animation. First, I'm going to rename this so I can just select this layer, press return on my keyboard, and I'll call this red stripe. And I'm also going to change the color of this to red. So I know this is the red stripe. Then I'm going to press S on my keyboard to bring up scale and I'm going to unlock the constrained proportions. Then I'm going to click the time clock stopwatch right here, the time button, and this creates a keyframe right there. Now that's telling After Effects that at this point in time, I want the size of this shape to be what it is right now. And that's our end property, so that's what we want it to end at. So I'm just gonna move this over to the right. We're gonna play with the timing in just a second, but I'm just gonna move it over to the right and then taking the first scale property, the width, drop this back down to zero. Now, if I turn off the viewing of the US flag in the background, you can see how this animation works. So we have our first stripe animating on. Now let's look at the actual House of Cards intro for reference. So I'm just going to place this in here and I'm just going to have to scroll to the end because that's where the actual House of Cards flag animation is. So I'm just clicking and scrolling to the end and then I'm going to put my timer at the very beginning of my composition and just scroll this layer to the right so that it starts at the very beginning of the composition and then I can kind of scroll through and see how long it actually takes the stripe to animate on. Now I'm gonna to have to zoom in this and it's not very high quality but I can still see the timing so it's very quickly so you see that red line it's animating on it starts and about there it ends. So that's the length of the animation and so that's how far we want our keyframes to be apart from each other. So it starts here at the very beginning, and then it ends here where our timeline indicator is. Does that make sense? Now that we have that one animation, I'm going to just turn off the intro video so I can see my stripe coming on to our composition. I'm gonna turn on the US flag again. Now that we have that one stripe, what we can do is just duplicate this layer. So I'm just going to duplicate it by pressing, selecting it in the timeline and pressing Command D. And then I'm just going to move that layer down so that it matches up with our next stripe. Make sure that you select the right one. So I have to select this second one and move it down. I'm using my keyboards now and the arrows to move it up or down. And you might have to zoom in if you need to get a better view. 
So again, duplicating, selecting that second one and moving it down. So pretty easy. Now we move on to our next stripe and this these ones are a little bit shorter. So we're still going to move it, duplicate this third one. So now we have a fourth stripe, moving it down using my keyboard. But instead of animating to 100%, we're going to animate to another number. So press U on your keyboard or S to bring up these scale keyframes. You see how before we scaled from zero to 100? Now we're going to scale from zero to 60. The US flag dimensions are about, the blue over here is about 20% of the width. So the stripes are about 60% and then the blue is 40% basically. So we're going to animate up to 60 for this stripe. Then again, we're going to duplicate and move down, duplicate and move down, duplicate and move down. The cool thing about this is that it's really easy to duplicate and move our white stripes. So what we can do is just select all of these stripes, duplicate them, and while we have them duplicated and all selected, click the red over here for one of the ones that you have selected and change to, they don't have a white, but let's just change to sandstone for now. So that's going to be our white stripes. And then go up to fill again with everything selected and change the fill color to white. Now with everything selected, press shift and down on your keyboard or just down on your keyboard and line it up with the other stripes. Now you might have to go in here, zoom in, make sure everything is lined up properly so that it's they don't overlap. So I'm just gonna go in here, perfect this just a bit. So it looks like our white stripes have to go down just a hair. Something like that. This can get a little tedious, but it might have been, it probably would have been better if I had zoomed in while everything was selected, because I can probably just select the rest of these now and move them down all together. Okay, so now we don't need this white stripe at the bottom, so I will just take this last stripe and delete it. So now we have everything animating on at the same time, and we need them to animate separately. So I'll just turn on my intro video, and what I'll do is just go through it one frame at a time, and to scrub through your timeline one frame at a time, what you can actually do is press command and then write on your keyboard arrows or control if you're using a PC. So starting at the beginning, I'm just going to scrub right, so command right, until I see the first white stripe popping up and I will move that first stripe, the first white stripe to that starting point. See that? So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. Then I'm going to scrub a couple more frames and it looks like the, the stripes start animating on every two frames. So I can kind of just base it off that. So I'll go two frames, move, two frames, move. And if you're skilled, you can kind of just do it without even moving the timeline indicator. After Effects kind of allows you to move things on the timeline one frame at a time and it locks it to those frames as you move things. So I'm just gonna do everything two frames at a time. And then I'll just zoom out and I'll just go to the end of this animation. So the last stripe should be completing right about here. Now let's see if that's true. I'll just select my last red stripe, press S and perfect. My last keyframe is happening right about there. It would probably be good to go in and just rename all these white stripe. So you can go through and name, rename all of the white stripes white stripe. And last thing we have to do is add our blue 
background. So I'm just going to turn off our intro video. I'm going to turn off the US flag. And I just want to play through this just so you can see what it looks like. So I'm just going to press zero on my keyboard. And there you have the first part of the animation, the stripes. Now let's add our blue. I'm going to turn back the US flag, turn on that again so that I have the right color. Then I'm going to take my shape tool, change the fill color to this blue, click OK. And now just go in here, zoom in just a bit, take our shape tool and create that shape. And you want it to be perfectly aligned, so you might have to zoom in here. Align it to the top and the bottom. Let's just go up to the top. Looks good. And to the right, make sure it goes to the end of the composition. Perfect. Here we will add the same type of scale animation. So using your pan behind tool, selecting our shape layer, we can just move the anchor point to the left of this shape. Press S to bring up our scale. We will set a keyframe. Make sure that you un constrain the proportions, clicking that little chain icon. We're going to move our key first keyframe to the right and then decrease the scale to zero. We'll bring up our intro video again just to see how long this takes. So it's going to start right about here. I'll move my blue shape layer right there. So it starts right there and it ends right about there. So let me turn off this intro video. I'll just put it above my last shape layer and let's just play through this. And I'll turn off the US flag. Let's play through it. It's looking pretty good. We have the animation down. The only thing that's kind of missing is that the speed of the motion is a little off and I see some black spaces in between some of the lines. So I got to make sure to move these shapes. I can just select them and move them up or down so that they are properly spaced and there's no spaces in between the shapes. So next, I'm just going to give you a quick tip on how to improve the motion and the speed of these layers. The motion and the speed of the, these animations are a little bit funny. They are not as fluid as the motion in the actual intro. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of easy easing. So easy ease is an effect that After Effects allows you to add to your keyframes that ramps up the speed or ramps down the speed of an animation. So instead of moving from point A to B at the same rate throughout point A to B, so right here we have these stripes going on. They're moving at the same speed from the very beginning to when they abruptly stop. In the natural world, things start slower, they speed up, and then when they're stopping, they slow down. Imagine a car. It doesn't start at 60 miles per hour and then stop at 60 miles per hour. It slo slowly goes up from 0 to 60, and then when you're slowing down, it goes from 60 back down to 0. So let's take all of our layers. So just select all of them. Just select one and then press shift and select the top one. Press S to bring up all of the keyframes for scale. I'm just going to make this timeline a little bit bigger. Then with your selection tool, just click and drag over all of these keyframes. You can right click, choose keyframe assistant, easy ease, or just hit F9 on your keyboard. So this is going to look a little bit better. So let's just get this full screen again. So the speed looks a little bit more natural. It's not perfect, but a little bit more natural. The next thing we can do is play with the speed even more with the graph editor. Click this little button, this icon right here at the top of your timeline for graph editor. Make sure that you are using the speed graph. So this second icon from the right is a little choose graph type and options menu. Instead of edit value graph, make sure you are on the edit speed graph. We can zoom in here a little bit 
And when all of your shapes are selected, you see these graphs. This is the speed. You see the ramping up. So the y-axis is the speed and the x-axis is the timeline. So it starts to ramp up and then slow down for all of these keyframes. We want it to ramp up and down even more. So select all of your keyframes by just clicking and dragging over the bottom of this graph. And when you zoom in, you'll see that there are these little yellow points that shoot out from each of the keyframes. Click this last one on the right and drag to the left. That's going to ramp down the speed even more. And then find one of these ones on the, it should be on the right side of one of these keyframes. So maybe going to the first one might be the best way to do it and click to the right. So it's going to ramp up even more and ramp down. So let's play through this just to see what this looks like. And that looks even better. So it ramps up, ramps down. Maybe the ramping up is a little bit too much. Maybe it slows into that ramping up just a bit. It's a little bit hard to find the right keyframe to select with all of these. So just ramp up just a little bit. We want more of that ramping down. So uncheck the key, the graph editor, play through it, and it looks like we have a much better looking animated flag. You can compare it to the intro video flag. So just let's play through it. This one looks a little bit smoother even. I think actually with the intro video, it doesn't ramp up much. It just ramps down even more. So I don't even know if ramping down is a word or a technical term. So go back to our graph editor. I'm going to zoom in here. Or first select all of our keyframes. Zoom in. We're going to change the ramping down so that it's starting very fast. And then it really slows down at the end. Yeah, that looks better. That looks much better. And even I can just select this last layer or just select the blue la shape layer. And we take our scale, we could ramp that down even more because that's the one that looks the slowest to me. All right, you could spend hours and hours tweaking the <laughs> timeline of everything, but this looks very good. It looks very close to the speed. The blue might I want to, I might want to slow down just a little bit, just like that. Great. In the next part, we're going to be adding this to the actual title card and adding text and the background. Let's create a new composition for our title card. So create, press this create a new composition button. Now we're going to use the standard 1920 by 1080s pixels. We're going to keep it at five seconds. We'll call this title card and click OK. We will add our background image. So we have this capital image. So I'm just going to drop this on our timeline and it's very big. So I'm just going to bring up the scale and make it smaller until it fits better. Here's where we can use our title screenshot to adjust the size of the flag and the text. So just drop our title screenshot above our capital image and then just bring up the scale and increase the scale until it fits the size of our actual composition. Now we can take this flag animation composition and just drop that actual composition right inside of our actual composition, our title card composition. Go later on until you see the whole flag animated on, bring up the scale and drop it down and we can zoom in here and we want to just move this right over our flag and make sure it's about the right size so you're really dropping it down quite a bit about nine percent or so 9.5 that's looking pretty darn good next let's add our text so let's drop the opacity of this title card. So go down to 50. And with this, we can even change the size and position of the, our, our capital building. 
This image isn't exactly how it is on the intro of House of Cards, but it's it's pretty close. So we can move this just a bit, something like so. And if I un, if I turn off the title screenshot, you can see that it looks pretty good. One thing though is that this image that I've shared with you is a little bit bright, so let's darken it just a bit. A quick way to add a layer to make it darker is just by going to Layer, New Solid, create a black solid, so just make sure you choose the color black, put this and then select OK and then put it right above the capital layer. Press T to bring up opacity and drop the opacity like 40% or so. It's not perfect, but for our purposes, it's a easy, an easy way to darken the background to make sure that the foreground stands out. So let's take our text tool, just type house. I'm using this big noodle titling text because I thought it looked similar to the House of Cards text in the title card. I'm going to move this down and line it up with the flag. I'm just gonna turn on our title screenshot to see what it looks like. I can see that the text in the House of Cards screenshot is a lot wider, it's more spread out. So I will play with the tracking a bit. So under your character panel, you can play with the tracking and the size just a little bit. It looks like it's even bolded a little bit. So that looks pretty good actually. So it's more like a bold and then about 260 tracking. And that's pretty good. Now, since I have the right settings for that house text, I'm just going to duplicate it and move it over here. And I'll say cards. I'll move the cards right over the cards text. And then one more time, I'm going to duplicate this and I will just say of. And the of is a different font in the House of Cards text and in what we're using. Let me just make sure what text I was using for the of. This one's actually very different from what the House of Cards text looks like. I'm using monotype Corsiva. I believe this should be installed already on your computer, especially if you're using a Mac. If not, you can just find one that looks similar. I'm going to make sure that it's not all caps and I don't want it to be bold either. And the spacing between the letters is smaller. So it looks like it's more like 150. Now I'll just move this down over the of text. So it's pretty darn close. It's not perfect, definitely, but it's close. I'm just going to turn off our title screenshot. The of text looks a little bit too close to the cards. I'm just going to make the tracking 120 and move the cards to the right a little bit. The only other animation we have, or there's two animations we have to do now the background scaling and the opacity, the fade on of the House of Cards text. So I can actually bring up the intro video. What I can do is actually just copy, copy or cut this. So I'm just gonna cut it by pressing Command X and then Command V on my title card composition. Turn it on. And then this will show us when we want to fade on the House of Cards text. So scrubbing through here, we're going to start right about there at this point. So select all of your text, press T on your keyboard, set the opacity to zero, and then click the time stop clock right here to set that keyframe. Then move your key, your timeline on your timeline to the right until it's fully faded on, right about there. And then set the opacity to 100%. So that's pretty good. The other thing with this intro video is that, and I'll just scale it down so you can kind of see what it looks like better, is that the background is zooming out. So let's create that background zooming out effect. I'm just going to delete that and then I will take our capital building and we will actually go to the end of our timeline, 
set the scale to 46, which is what it is, and then set a keyframe right there. Then go to the beginning of the timeline and change the scale to like 50. So now we have the Capitol building scaling back, creating that zoom out effect. We have our text fading on and we have the flag animation. So putting it all together, if I just play through this, we get a pretty good looking house of cards animation. I think that's pretty good. The flag looks, looks solid. The text is great. Of course it's different. The font is different and the image in the background is different. It's not a time lapse. It's just a still image. But you can imagine that this is, if you had those shots and the exact fonts, it would look literally exactly the same. The next thing we have to do is export this video. So that's what I'll be covering how to do next. Before exporting this video, I like to just clean up my compositions. So to quickly collapse all of these layers, I just press Command A, S, S to clo close down everything. I'm just gonna delete this title screenshot. And actually that's pretty much it. That's all I need to do. So just play through it one more time to make sure that the timing of everything looks good. Maybe the opacity of this black solid might be need to be a little bit higher to make it a little bit darker. And that looks pretty good. Now let's export this. So go to composition, add to render queue. You can also add it to Adobe Media Encoder, but I'm just going to export right within After Effects. In the output module, just this drop down menu, click this H264 option. You can then click the H264 text right there to bring up all of the options for H264, but that preset is a 100% quality H264 video, so that should be good to go. And then the output too, just click that not yet specified text and save it to wherever you want. So I'll save it to assets and I'll call this one class project house of cards. Click save and then click render. It's going to render out, depending on how fast your computer is, it might take a little while. You can tell that my computer is pretty fast. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I wish I had even more gigabytes of RAM, but it's pretty good for most animations. If we go to our folder, we have this class project now. If I open it with QuickTime, we can then play it back just to make sure, just to double check what it looks like. That looks pretty solid. I am super happy about this and I hope you have enjoyed this series of tutorials on building the House of Cards title card. If you are following along, I would love if you exported your own version and posted it to the course site. I would love to see your work. If you want extra credit, please upload and post your own version. So create a different flag. If you live in another country, you can use a different country's flag. If you want to use your state flag or create your own flag, do something different. Use the same techniques of just the simple scale animation to create your animation and then maybe create a different title, use a different image, use video. If you have video, just get creative with this technique and and go crazy with it. I would love to see how creative you can get and then uh, I'll give you some feedback. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in another tutorial. As always, check out videoschoolonline.com for my latest blog articles, free tutorials, or premium classes on everything related to motion graphics, photography, video production, business creation, and more. Have a great day.